Good evening, I am Galatea and welcome back to the channel. This is my expired assistant, Asis, and today I'm going to introduce you to one of the best living storytellers. The daughter of Megan, so lovely and blooming, I met in Glenavon's gay glittering hall, and I rose my heart, ambition assuming, to dance with the damsel, the bloom of the ball. O oh, daughter of Megan, look not so alluring, on a youth that his hope with thy hand must resign, that now the sad pang of despair is enduring, the splendour thou lovest can never be mine. Go, daughter of Megan, to castles of splendour, each eye that beholds thee thy presence shall bless, and the delicate mind feel a passion more tender, on thy beauties to gaze than another's possess. But daughter of Megan, tomorrow I'm going, on oceans to sail where the rude billows roar, I feel my full heart with affliction o'erflowing, perhaps I may gaze on thy beauties no more. O oh, the daughter of Megan, so lovely and blooming, I met in Glenavon's gay glittering hall, and high rose my heart, ambition assuming, to dance with the damsel, the bloom of the ball. So you guys might not guess this about me, because yes, it is true, I am a snarky little s word but it it is it is the case that i am also a romantic at heart okay so firstly to get this out of the way this isn't an, an analysis of kate rosby this is just my really personal take and feelings on why i love her music and think it's absolutely fantastic um i don't to be honest know why i even bother saying that that is my personal take because that's exactly the same thing that i said before my his dark materials review where i literally said hey guys this isn't an analysis this is my personal take on why i personally did not like the first two episodes and then somehow all the comments are people whining and crying about the fact that it wasn't a proper analysis and that i only watched two episodes Yes, yes, that was the entire point of the video. I did say that in the introduction. So, who is Kate Rusby? Well, she goes by many names. The Angel of the North, the Nightingale of Barnsley, or Kate. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know her personally. I don't know if I can call her Kate. Kate Rusby is a folk singer from Yorkshire, and I have loved her music for as long as I can remember. She's genuinely, she's the only musician that I've kept up with throughout my whole life. The only musician that's been a constant, that I've always checked for a new album release, that I've always been up to date with. So my dad got my sister and I one of her first albums, probably nearing on 20 years ago now. So I'm 23 at the moment, and I was probably maybe five years old or younger when I first heard her music. Before that point, I thought that S Club 7's Reach for the Stars was the height of musical genius. So yeah, as I said, I don't remember exactly when it was that I got into Kate Rusby, and I don't even really remember my life before Kate Rusby, but I do remember very clearly going to see her gig in York when I was about I was about six years old. And since that point, I think that properly cemented me as a massive Kate Rusby fan. So what I'm gonna do for this video is just talk about a few of her songs and why I think they're so good and amazing and such great stories. Cause this is the main thing. We love stories on this channel. This channel's all about storytelling. Okay, so why am I bring up her, bringing up her music? Why is it relevant? Um, I'm gonna read some of her, I can't really play because obviously YouTube, you know, copyright stuff, I can't really play any of her songs obviously, but you guys can go listen to them. So what I'm gonna do is read some of her lyrics then we can talk about them and it's gotta be done in a Yorkshire accent because that is how they're meant to be sung and that's how they're meant to be spoke. So that's what we're doing. So The Daughter of Megan, this song in particular and loads of her songs actually, to me, it's like the song is like a pre-Raphaelite painting. Do you know what I mean? Like the song itself, the lyrics. Some of her songs are really old traditional songs, some are completely original, and some are a bit of both. Some are like old traditional songs that she's reworked, rewritten the lyrics for, or given a new tune to an old song, or new lyrics to an old tune. Makes sense? It's all mix and match, but you know, that's kind of Kate Rusby's vibe. So, okay, so here we're gonna get into the heartwarming stuff. So, with Kate Rusby, I remember listening to her music as a very young child and just being so transfixed and transported, and it really moved me. Right here, right in the heart, genuinely felt it. Still feel it now when I listen to her music. And I think something that can connect so well on that emotional level with with such a young kid as I was, it's a pretty great achievement because there wasn't, you know, I feel that in a way it's easier to be moved as an adult by stuff because you've got a greater understanding of things, but to be quite young and to be emotionally moved on that level, yeah, I think it's quite impressive on behalf of the artist who had that effect, if that makes sense. I remember being very little, like six, six years old or younger, and thinking, you know, I'm listening to all the songs, all the joys and the sorrows of people in the past, that they lived so long ago, yet I'm hearing their songs still, their tragedies and their heartbreak, and somehow I can feel their sorrow, and it still hurts. I can feel their joy, their lives, 
and it's uplifting. It was the same as like, I've always loved poetry as well as, as a little kid. I like old nature poetry and stuff, but it was kind of the same feeling as that, like listening to Kate Bradley's music is like the understanding that, oh, they, they were people like me, people just like me. They lived in the same land I lived in. They loved the same hills and valleys. And though we're separated by time, we're still the same and we're not separated by place. Very cheesy, but that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I can't actually put into words how her music makes me feel. And I think that's what's so special about good music because it does go beyond words. A lady was walking on a midsummer's day, the birds they were whistling so merrily and gay, when along came a white steed in the finest array and it carried a young man, these words he did say. Come live by the great moon that rules the strong tide, climb up on me horse, love, and be my sweet bride. I bid you good morning, this young man did say, and where might you be going on such a nice day? I'm walking to view, sir, the bonny blue sea, for it's all I have left now that means much to me. Come live by the great moon that rules the strong tide, climb up on me horse, love, and be my sweet bride. If that's all you love now, come ride in with me, you'll live in my castle deep under the sea. You'll sleep in my gold bed, my fine silken sheets, and have gifts of great beauty from all that you meet. Come live by the great moon that rules the strong tide. Climb up on me horse, love, and be my sweet bride. She's up in the saddle, and away they did ride. The horse skipped and danced over waves on the tide. Now she's only remembered this story I tell from an old man on horseback who once knew her well. Come live by the great moon that rules the strong tide. Climb up on me horse, love, and be my sweet bride. I love that one. I'm pretty sure she wrote that when she was like 15 or 16 from what I remember, which it says in the what I have, the Kate Rusby songbook. Can you see that? It's an absolute mess. My sister wrote her name on it when we were like five years old. So we like her scrawl of writing and it's got weird stickers. I don't even know. I don't know what that is, a weird mark, but yeah. So we've had this for years with loads of her songs in it and notes on it and big fan. I'm pretty sure with this one, what she did was, so it's a traditional song, Botany Bay, and I'm pretty sure she wrote, rewrote some of the lyrics. So it's an old song that she adapted, like she does with a lot of her music. And it's a song back when the British, the English used to send the criminals off to Australia. So it's a song singing about someone who's been transported to Australia and has to leave. Farewell to old England forever. Farewell to me sweetheart as well. Oh, keep me child safe in your arms, love. I need you like no words can tell. Singing to rely, to rely, adite, to rely, to rely, a, to rely, to rely, adite, sail into Botany Bay. The captain that is our commander, he sails by the stars and the sun. If e'er well I live, I'll return again, to me darling sweet kisses I'd run. For seven long years he's transported, seven long years and a day. Oh, I wish I were drowned on the ocean bed, for they've taken me true love away. Singing to rely, to rely, adite, to rely, to rely, a, to rely, to rely, adite, sail into Botany Bay. I love the fact as well that Kate Rusby sings in a Yorkshire accent. Now, there is one thing you should know about me, and that is that I am a northerner. I was born in Newcastle, raised in Yorkshire, and I swear to God, if I get any southerners commenting that, oh, well, I can't be because I don't have a northern accent, um, and I know it'll be a southerner, because I don't get this from northerners. Southerners, southerners don't, they never believe that I'm from the north. It's always them. Except, actually, if this one time, there was this one bloke that I met in a pub who was from Lancashire, and he didn't believe I was northern, but then we found out that I'm actually more northern than he is. But then, to be honest, what can you expect from someone from Lancashire? No, we haven't gotten over the War of the Roses yet. And yes, I do realise that that was hundreds of years ago. I'm just waiting at the moment for all the Scots to come in and comment. Lol, you think Yorkshire's in the north. Um, it's okay. You don't need to comment that. We'll just pretend that you did. And then we can all just get on with our lives. I'm pissing off everyone in Britain right now, aren't I? Except Yorkshire. Sorry. <laughs> I am joking. Point being, point being though, my point is that my accent is not a southern accent. It's not a southern accent. You can, southerners can say all you like that it, it's not. It's not a southern accent. Um, you can piss off if you think it is. I don't know what it is with the south thinking that they own this accent. You don't own this accent, okay? People all over the country have this accent. I have to clarify that because otherwise I'm gonna get loads of people going, oh, you're not really from the North though, are you? Not with that accent. You just live there. You must really be from the home counties. 
No, no, I am from here. I am from here. I don't just live here. I'm from here, okay? My granddad was a pitman in County Durham. Him and my grandma were born, lived and died in the north. I've lived here pretty much all my life. And my accent's got nothing to do with it, thanking you. Do I sound a little bit defensive about that? Yes, probably. So that being said about the accent, <laughs> it is still true that the Yorkshire accent, it sounds like home to me. Cruel were my parents to tear my love from me. Cruel was the press gang that took him off to sea. Cruel was the little boat that rowed him off the strand. And cruel was the big ship that took him from the land. Haul away, boys, haul away. Haul away, boys, haul away. Cruel was the water that ship it sailed upon. Cruel was the fair wind, for now my love he's gone. Had you blown a roaring gale, they'd have left him on dry land where he would walk beside me, and I would hold his hand. Haul away, boys, haul away. Haul away, boys, haul away. The ring beneath my pillow is the ring he gave to me. I'll wear it on my finger for all the world to see. But cruel was the captain, the boatswain, and the men, for they didn't care a farthing if I saw my love again. Haul away, boys, haul away. Haul away, boys, haul away. Cruel. This one used to make me cry as well when I was a little kiddo. So. Yeah, with me, anything that's of the past, anything with that air of romance, anything bittersweet, that feels bittersweet because it's so beautiful, but it's bittersweet because it's gone forever, it's lost to time. That feeling of something being lost, lost to the past, lost to time. Something a little bit mythical, and something very involved with nature. Anything of that kind, it's just all stuff like that I adore. And it's for those reasons as well that I love pre-Raphaelite art for their worship of nature and mythology and romance and tragedy and beauty and nobility and all I think that's good and great about the human soul. It's kind of how my interpretation of how I see pre-Raphaelite art. It's the same reason, all the same reasons I love like Arthurian legends. Um, and to me, that's the same feeling and the, the same thing as what Kate Rosby's music is. That's how I hear it and how I've always heard it since I was a little kid. To me, her music is a worship, and yes, I think worship is the right word. Her music, to me, is a worship of people and stories lost to time. A worship of nature and romance and the land itself. And that's very important to me. And folk songs are the stories of the people and the land that they're from. And it, it for me, folk songs, especially Kate Rusby's music, I think just because she's my favourite, but folk music seems to come as much from the land, seems to be born as much from the land itself as it is from the people, because the people very, you know, very much formed by the land they're from, and it almost comes... <laughs> I'm sorry, I know, this is weird, but it seems like it comes through the people from the land itself and comes through the people from that. It's, there's something divine about it. And yes, I do mean that in the literal sense, as in, it, there's an almost spiritual element to it, for me. And yes, this is how deep my love of Kate Rusby's music and folk music in general goes. But the point is, I think folk music, and Kate Rusby specifically, because we're talking about her, is some of the best storytelling. It's timeless. It's things that resonate all throughout human history, all throughout time, that people are still singing those songs today. And they're still important and res resonate with us today. And that's really good storytelling. And something there's something both ancient as old as time and timeless about them. They don't, they never, they haven't, they've never fallen out of relevance. A lot of them have, are songs about the tragedies, that are, you know, like the sailing to Botany Bay. That one, I used to cry when I listened to it as a little kid. And you should listen to it, it's beautiful. And Kate Rusby's version of Botany Bay. It's, again, it's very personal to me. I'm saying, as I said, this is an analysis of why, for me, I love this music. And other people might not have the same view of this music, you might not love it as I do, you might not have the same emotional connection, and I understand that completely. Because for me it's very personal in the sense that it's really connected to my home, to my land, and to, like, Botany Bay in particular, I used to hear that and it used to make me sad because the first line of it is, you know, farewell to old England forever. I was a little kid and I used to sit and think, what if that I was alive then and I had to leave England forever? And it just, it just got me right here. It's happy and sad at the same time. Like, it's, it's born out of a love for the land, but also a sadness because you're leaving it behind. Does it make sense? It's like, and I, I love that. And this sort of brings me on to, like, a wider point about why I love the music, so I love Britain, I really do, I love England, and I don't know what most people mean when they say that, I know that's got a lot of probably weird connotations nowadays, but what I mean by that, I'll tell you what I mean by that, 
For me, that love is tied up hugely in the land and the landscape. And it has been ever since I was a kid. That's really what, because I love where I'm from. And when I think about what I love about it, it's always to do with the landscape and literature. They're like the two big things. Basically, I absolutely adore this landscape. It's like heaven to me. I love it. And Kate Rusby, so Kate Rusby sings old songs from all over England, Ireland, Wales and Scotland. Um, and I love that link to the past, to old Britain, to old England, to perhaps it's just her accent. Although I don't know, I don't think it is, but her music is so tied up. And it probably as well because I listened to it from when I was so young when I was living in the landscape and then her music was like almost a soundtrack to a lot of that. But her music is so tied up for me in explaining my love for my home. Yes, Britain and yes, England, but more specifically, Yorkshire, because I love Yorkshire. <laughs> Best county in England, land of the white rose, and they don't call us God's own country for nothing. And that's all I need to say about that because God thinks we're the best, so <laughs> I'm kidding. And her voice is so beautiful, voice of an angel. It's just so clear and pure. It's like a clean, a clean crystal stream or something, you know? It just rings like a bell. Um, and I love the fact that she sings in her accent and it just works with all the songs. One of the, one of the main ones I love, Kate Rusby's version, is her version of the song, sometimes known as Blooming Heather, sometimes known as Wild Mountain Time. And I know this song is about Scotland, but with Kate's accent and the fact that I've grown up in Yorkshire, as a kid for me, listening to that song Blooming Heather, it was always about the Yorkshire Moors. Because I live, I still live now just, just past the edge of the moors, basically really not far from the edge of the North Yorkshire Moors is where I live. And in summertime, it's beautiful because yeah, all the moors are covered in purple heather and it's just beautiful. And that song for me was just like... And this one, another one of her songs that I really love and I'm going to read out part of it is the lyrics to Bring Me A Boat. Go listen, go listen to that one. And this one for me as well, it's about the Tyne, the Tyne River. So I was born right next to the Tyne. Well, okay, not right next to the Tyne. I was born in Newcastle, very close to the River Tyne. And I love the song because it's all that stuff I was talking about, kind of tragic and happy and something of the past that's still relevant. So this song is about the Tyne. And again, even though it technically should be done in a Geordie accent, I'm not going to do that because Kate Rusby's got a Yorkshire accent. We're talking about Kate Rusby. And also I can't, do a Geordie accent, even though I should be able to. And you've got to listen to her sing it, because it's just so much has lost if you just hear me reading it, as opposed to her singing it with the voice of an angel, so. Kate Rusby, bring me a boat. Bring me a boat to cross to my dear. I stand here alone with my sweetheart so near. Bring me a boat to cross o'er the Tyne, for its deep murky waters part his heart and mine. And the Tyne, it flows on and out to the sea. If a boat I am granted, then safe let me be. And gently I'll go, for gently I'll row, as gently you breathe, as you ebb and you flow. Does he know I stand each day on the shore? Does he know I'd give all to see him once more? Does he know I've wept ten thousand times o'er? And is he still waiting as he was before? The boatman, he wants the gold I can't give. My parents are poor, so I've nothing to give. Only my heart, and that will not float. So please, don't deny me, and bring me a boat. I love her version of the Bonnie House of Arley. And yes, it's a Scottish song, but I'm still gonna say it in a Yorkshire accent because she sings it in a Yorkshire accent and I know it's a Scottish song, but it's just the way she sings it and it's fantastic. So this is the Bonnie House of Arley, tra a traditional song, but she's singing it. It fell on a day, a bonny, bonny day, when the corn grew green and yellow, that there fell out a great dispute between Argyle and Arley. Argyle he's raised up five hundred men, five hundred men and many. He's led them down to the bonny Dunkel, made them shoot the bonny house of Ali. A lady was looking over the castle walls, and oh, but she looks weary. And there she spied the great Argyle, come to plunder the bonny house of Ali. Come down the stairs, lady, he said, come down and kiss me fairly. I'll not come down, nor kiss you, she said, though you won't leave a standing stone at Ali. I have but one favour to ask of the Argyle, and I hope that you will grant me fairly. Oh, take me down to some dark, dowry den, where I can't see the plundering of Ali. He's taken her by her left shoulder, and oh, but she looks weary. He's led her up to the top of the town, made her watch the plundering of Ali. Oh, fire on, fire on, my many men, oh, and see that you fire clearly. Oh, I vow and I swear by this broad sword I wear, I won't leave a standing stone at Ali. If the great Sir John had been but at home, as he is this night with Prince Charlie, 
neither Argyle nor any Scottish lord dare have plundered the bonny house of Arley. Seven saddened sons I brought unto him, and the eighth never saw his daddy. If I were to bear a hundred more, they'd all draw a sword for Prince Charlie. Or if I were to bear a hundred more, they'd all draw a sword for Prince Charlie. If you want some more light-hearted, fun, silly songs, well, Kate Rusby does those too. She does those too. She does The Good Man. That was my jam as a kid. I absolutely love that. It's about a bloke whose wife is clearly having an affair that he can't seem to quite grasp. But that's a good one to sing along to. So The Good Man, that was one That was one of my first favourite Kate Rusby songs was The Good Man. Also, Sir Reglamore, classic song about a knight fighting a dragon. Um, it's an old song and it was written by a Yorkshireman. So I think for Sir Reglamore, Kate Rusby wrote the music for that, but the words are traditional. Sir Reglamore was a valiant knight, far a lanky down dilly. He took up his sword and he went to fight, far a lanky down dilly. As he rode over hill and dale, all armoured in his coat of mail, far the lap and bad eep and bad ap and bad. Lanky down dilly. Out came a dragon from her den, far a lanky down dilly, that killed God knows how many men, far a lanky down dilly. And when she saw Sir Eglamore, you should have heard that dragon roar, far the lap and bad eep and bad ap and bad, lanky down dilly. <laughs> well then the trees began to shake, far the lanky down dilly. Horse did tremble and man did quake, far the lanky down dilly. The birds betook them all to peep, it would have made a grown man weak, far let you get it, the limber dilly dilly. This dragon had a plaguey hide, far the lanky down dilly. That could the sharpest steel abide, father lanky down dilly. No sword could enter through her skin, which vexed the knight and made her grin, father lap and the lanky down dilly. But as in collar she did burn, father lanky down dilly, he fetched the dragon a great good turn, father lanky down dilly. As a yawning she did fall, he thrust his sword up, hilt and all, father lap and the lanky down dilly. Like a coward she did fly, father lanky down dilly, to her den, which was hard by, father lanky down dilly. There she lay all night and roared, and the knight was sorry for his sword. Father Lap and Maddie Lap and Lanky Down Dilly. And that's a classic tune. Another great fun one is Big Brave Bill, which I love, and it's about Big Brave Bill, the hero that drinks Yorkshire tea all the time. Yes, you heard that correctly. Yes, it's fantastically amazing. And yeah, it is just a fun song. Her songs remind me a bit of Arthurian legends as well, because a lot of them have references to elves or fairies in them. Well, not a lot of them, some of them, like the Elven Knight. And stuff like that, you know, and I love all that kind of thing. Um, anyone who knows me and knew me as a kid would know that I'm obsessed with fairies, so that was always a good thing. Basically, the reason I'm talking about her music is because every song of hers is like a story, and I love stories. So, as a kid, I loved it, and I love her music still. It's fantastic, it's amazing, it's brilliant. 10 out of 10 would recommend to a friend. I hope I properly explained why. I really, really love her music, and if you like old folky stuff, if you like folk music, first of all, you should already know who she is. Um, no, but if you like old stories, myths, legends, that kind of thing, then you know. Or if you just like good singing. If you just, if you like music, maybe you'd like this. Go check it out. I'm gonna quickly list some of my favourite of her songs. I put them on the screen as well. The Lark, Botany Bay, Falling, Village Green Preservation Society, Sweet Bride, Maid of Lamwellen, Blooming Heather, Wild Mountain Tyne, Bring Me a Boat, Shout to the Devil, Elven Knight, Big Brave Bill, I Courted a Sailor, I Wish. Let the cold wind blow, cruel, the good man, Sir Reglamore, wild goose, underneath the stars, fare thee well, game of all fours, let me be, and there's more, but we'll leave that for now. The list of things on the screen, go check them out. Um, oh wait, no, there's more, hang on, but first I will say, a lot of her old music I can't actually find on Spotify, some of her new music is, but a lot of my favourites isn't actually on Spotify, a lot of those I listed. They're all on YouTube though, and her albums, which you can buy. I will say, that on, there is on Spotify her Christmas album from last year, which is... I loved it. So two of my favourite songs from her Christmas album that was released last year, The Holly King. So that's like, I love, which I love that version. I way prefer that to the like modern idea of Santa Claus, you know, the red, the red hat and whatever. I really like the green cape, the Victorian idea as well of Father Christmas, Saint Nicholas. And it's a song about the Holly King and I just love that song. Um, should I go listen to that if you want to feel Christmassy? Because it's December now, guys. So those are my recommendations to end this video on. Uh, her Christmas, it's her Christmas album from last year. The Holly King, my favourite, and her version of Lule. Am I saying that correctly? That is the song, isn't it? Lule, Lula, yeah, Lule. Um, so I think that's everything I have to say. I mean, there's not, because obviously I could say way, way, way more, but I'm not gonna say way more. Thank you, Asus, for your amazingly intelligent insights, analysis, opinions that you've given. You've been an invaluable, 
invaluable in this discussion. Um, thank you, man. Thank you. I'm really glad I got you on my team. You know? Thanks. Couldn't have done it without him. That wasn't funny, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. And, you know, if one of you wanted to send this video to Kate Rusby, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, notice me, Kate. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Kind of. Not really. I have no idea whether or not this is Wednesday when I have uploaded this video. Um, as I've said in comments in the past few times, I know I wanted to stick to the whole Wednesday uploads thing. However, because basically I don't have good enough Wi-Fi at my house to upload videos from here, so I have to go somewhere else every single time I want to upload something, which causes a lot of problems, so it just means when can I get to the place where I can upload them, which means sometimes it'll be Wednesdays, sometimes not, depending on technical issues and other stuff. So basically it'll be a video every week, hopefully Wednesdays, I'm going to still aim for Wednesdays, but it might not be actual Wednesdays. Thank you everyone very much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, Merry Merry, happy, merry December. Not quite Christmas yet, but I can say merry December. Get in the festive season. It's been a really, really bad year for everyone. But, you know, we're gonna, it's gonna go out with a bang. Hopefully not literally, though. Who could say with that? Yeah, I shouldn't make jokes like that about 2020. God, it's, who knows? Okay, happy December, everyone. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.